Hey guys, Kenny here, Ken Small Engine Repair. Well, we've got a Toro 721E that a customer dropped off in the middle of the uh, snow squall yesterday. You can see it. There, there it is. Nice little unit. Anyway, he dropped it off like right before the snow squall yesterday, and he said it needs uh, choke to run. Can you fix it? And I said, sure, I'll fix it. So I took the time this morning, and uh, you'll see it. it's a quick repair, and I fixed it and changed the oil, got him going. But look at the end of the video. There's something he forgot to do and sort of put me in a little bit of a bind. So look at the very end of the video when I'm all set and uh, see if that ever happened to you. Because this is probably the first time it's ever happened to me. I've been servicing stuff for 23 years, 22 years. And uh, this is the first time this has ever happened to me. So take a look at the end of the film. I'm sure you'll laugh like I did, but now I really don't know what to do. So. Take a look, hope you enjoy it. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, as you can see, I just took out the drain cap of this Toro 721E Power Clear, and it's level, you can see the engine's level. When the engine's level, you shouldn't have that much oil coming out of it when you take the dipstick out. So this engine was way overfilled. Now the complaint that this customer had was basically, he couldn't run it without choke being on, so the carburetor needs to be cleaned. But I figured before I clean it, he gave me a quart of synthetic 5W30. So I'll change the oil, but I just wanted to see. Uh, I'd like to take the oil out before I even work on it, because that way I don't have to tip it over. But look at all that extra oil in there. There's probably, you know, maybe five, six ounces of oil in there that's overfilled. And these things only take about 16 ounces of oil, so it's pretty overfilled. So I'm going to drain it out tip the thing over and then we'll see how the carburetor looks. I may not have to take the carburetor off because it's, it's easily accessible. So let me see, I'll be right back. You can also see on these Toro engines, the vent tube, you can see it's actually coated with oil on the end of it. These valve covers, if you tilt the snowblower back, a lot of people tilt them back to put them in their cars and their trucks. The problem is when you tilt them back, this thing fills up with oil and it goes through this hose and it'll pour all over the place. So people think that it's got a massive oil leak. Well, no, you're not supposed to tip these things over. If you keep them upright, if you're gonna transport them for an extended period of time, drain the oil out and then transport them if you must tip them over, okay? This way you don't get oil all over the place, okay? Or if you're gonna tip it over, put a plug in that hose so it doesn't plug out and then tip it over and let the oil drain back in. This way you won't have a massive leak. As long as you know there's gonna be oil coming out of that tube, you can allow for it, all right? I'll be back. Well, we took the bowl off with a 10 millimeter nut on it and uh, there is some water in there. You can see a little bit of water in the bottom of the bowl. You can see the water jiggling. So it wouldn't have caused it to use choke all the time, but it, is, it does mean it was dirty in there and you can see a little bit of discoloration inside the bowl. So I'm going to reach up into the carburetor with a screwdriver. See, let me get the jet out, see if we can inspect it. Hopefully just the jet is clogged, but uh, we'll see. Let me grab a screwdriver. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we got lucky. We were able to get up into the carburetor with a screwdriver. I have an old, uh, or is it an old Klein screwdriver works great on these jets. I was able to get up in there and get it. And as you can see, it is clogged. You cannot see, you can't see through it. All right, that's a white paper down there and you, you can't see through it. So the jet is clogged. So hopefully that will be the only problem with this carburetor. I'd like to get the emulsion tube out, but in order to do it, you gotta take the carburetor off. And I don't really wanna spend the time to do that if this is the only thing that's gonna be wrong with it. But what I did find is, the hidden dipstick that causes so much trouble. I notice, see the oil dripping down here? I'm like, where the heck's all that oil coming from? Well, if you notice, you have the rear dipstick that you use, but look up there, folks. You got the front dipstick. Let me see if I can get in there. Uh, right there, see that orange? Right there, that orange, that's the dipstick. That's this dipstick on the bottom. Okay, yeah, there you go, there you go, you can see it. That's the hidden dipstick that nobody really knows about. And unless you know to look for it, 
you may not find it, and oil will leak out of there. It does loosen over time. This one was loose. I stuck my hand up there. It was loose. So I'm going to tighten that up, and that way he won't get any more of these oil leaks coming out the front of the engine. So you definitely get oil leaks if you don't have that front dipstick tightened and people don't even know it's there. So that's just another tip for you guys. So hopefully cleaning out this jet, we're going to go get our... Uh, pipe cleaners for the jet. We'll clean that out. We'll put it back together. We'll see how this thing runs. We'll put oil in it. Hopefully that'll be it. So we'll be back with you shortly. All right, we're going to clean out this jet. So We got our cleaners here. Make sure you can see everything. All right. Let's get a cleaner that we think is the right size. Oh yeah, there was a big clump of yellow dirt that came out of there. Let's get that clean. Get one that fits pretty good. Uh, I think this one's going to be the one that matches. Yeah. So we're going to clean that out. All right, now. There you go. You can see through it. You can see the hole. It's clear. We're going to put this back in the carburetor. Let's see. All right. Oh, let me see if I can set you up here. It is cold out here, people. All right. Let's see. Camera rolling. Yep. Make sure. Yep, you're rolling. All right. Let's get that jet back up there. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let a little fuel come out because the water goes to the bottom. So let me tip it over and let a little bit of fuel out. I got my pan here where the oil was. Let's get some fuel. So if there's any water in the fuel, we'll get some of that out first because that always goes to the bottom. All right. Let's see, are we still on focus here? I think so. Get this jet back in here. Uh, not too tight, it's brass, you don't want to strip it. Okay, that's tight. Now we gotta put back on the float bowl. Let's see, we got your...
Yeah, we got a good picture there. All right. So. Float bowl is a little crusty. We're gonna spray the float bowl with a little bit of carb cleaner. This STP cleaner isn't the best for rubber parts, but for clean, cleaning out float bowls and stuff like that, it's all right. It's okay for that. All right, football's all clean. Let's get that installed. All right. Usually you put the drain where you can access it. I put the drain, you know, like there, so you can access it. That's all. All right. Make sure the bowl is centered on the gasket. We'll snug that down. Ten millimeter. Not too tight. Click. Okay. Now, I gotta wipe some of this oil off. You got a bunch of oil here from where it was leaking out, and you can see leaking all over the place. Let me wipe all this stuff off. I'm gonna tighten all the plugs. We'll fill it up with oil, and then uh, we'll be right back and we'll see if it runs without the choke. All right, the maximum oil capacity for this engine is 20 ounces. So whenever you drain oil out of these, it never all comes out. So I start with 16 ounces, then I level it off, and then I go back and I see what it is. So we'll start out with 16. We'll start out with 16 ounces. Then we'll check it and we'll go from there. This is 48 ounces, so 16 from 48 is 32. So. So we'll wait till we get about, let's see, 32. We'll go, we'll go to, let's see. A little bit more. I'm gonna put in about 16, 17 ounces, and then we're gonna check it. This is a synthetic 530 that he bought, which is fine. He got it at Home Depot, but that's okay. It's synthetic, it meets the small engine specification, so. Like I said, I fill it like this, it's easier. Put that dipstick back in it. Then I'll make it level. Then I'll make it nice and level. Okay. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. Then I'm going to pull the dipstick out and I'm going to see where the dipstick is, where the oil is on that dipstick. It should just be coming out. The oil should just be coming out, literally not coming out, but just coming out, like right at that edge. And that's where it's good. So let me come back to you in a few minutes after it levels off for a little bit and then we'll see where the oil level is. All right, guys, I took the dipstick off and it didn't dribble out which means it's not fully full 
So we'll put a little bit more in there to bring it up to where it's supposed to be. Again, these crankcases are full when it's just up to the top of the threads, not massively dripping out, just up to the top of the threads. So I put in 16 ounces. So now I'll put in another couple and we'll see where we are. I'll tilt it up a little bit just to make it easier. All right. That's just a couple of ounces. Make sure it goes all in. Okay. We'll let that drain in there for a second. All right. And if you notice right now, the oil is right up to the thread. See, if I tilt it just a hair, it starts to drip out. So it's right up to the threads. That's where you wanna be. That's where your oil is full. So I'm gonna put this dipstick back in. Not too tight, but tight. All right, wipe it all down. Make sure it's good. All right, there's no fuel leaks or anything. Everything looks good. I'm gonna wipe off this breather hose. All right, oil's good, everything's clean. Now we're gonna try and start it up and see if it'll run without choke. His complaint was that you needed half choke to run it or else it wouldn't run. We found a clogged main jet. So hopefully now, this sucker will be all set, ready to go. All right. Ugh. Ooh, sucks getting old. Anyway. All right, let's put this thing over here so the exhaust is blowing away. Let me set up the camera for you. So the goal is we'll put it on choke. We'll start it, let it run on choke for a little bit and then see if it'll stay without choke, because his whole complaint was you had to have choke. All right. We cleaned out the carburetor, so any water that was in there is gone. I'm not gonna use the electric start because these don't really require it. So let's pull out the choke, key on, couple pumps, and here we go. baby so basically all it was guys was the clogged main jet so that was a simple repair so i'm going to call the guy up he's a neighbor tell him to come get it we found the loose extra dipstick in the front so that'll help him to not lose oil we'll also tell him that the oil level in these is only supposed to be 20 ounces and i'll show him how to check it but he's going to be happy i'm going to be happy another happy customer all right guys that's it for now if you got one of these Toros with the 212cc engine or even the smaller ones with the 141 or even the 99, check the double dipsticks if they're there and also check your jets to make sure they're clean. That's it for me now, guys. We will talk to you soon. Here's a predicament, guys. I finished the snow thrower for my neighbor and I want to have him pick it up, but you know what? I don't know his name. I got a bunch of neighbors. I got a ton of neighbors, actually, a million of them. And uh, this guy didn't leave his number on the unit. And I don't know where the hell he lives, which house, who he is, because I service everyone's stuff around my neighborhood. I really don't know where the hell this guy lives or what his first name is. So I can't look him up on my phone. I just don't know. 
So I'm going to put a big note on it that says done. And hopefully he sees it during the day when he walks by. Because at this point, he told me no rush, but without leaving a phone number, how the heck am I supposed to get in touch with the guy? So just remember, when people leave stuff for you, make sure they leave a phone number for you. Because I don't know who this guy is, and I'm hoping this thing doesn't sit here all week. All right, that's it for now. We'll talk to you soon.